It's Monday, September 26. Welcome to Business Incorporated, coming to you live from Lagos. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the show today, OPEC members set to meet in Algeria as oil producers are expected to make another attempt to reverse a slump in crude prices. Fitch ratings downgrades Angola's long-term foreign and local currency issuer default ratings to B from B+. Algeria plans to allow its dominant state banks to list on the local stock exchange. Algeria's energy minister says all producers in the OPEC group of countries will make another attempt this week to reverse a slump in crude prices. He said there will be an informal gathering of OPEC members on the sidelines of an energy conference in Algiers on Wednesday. The fall in prices has been causing problems for poorer members of OPEC. Oil prices collapsed from peaks of more than $1,000 a barrel in mid $100 a barrel in mid-2014 to near 13-year lows below $30 in January. Analysts remain gloomy about the chances of an agreement. OPEC's 14 members, which produce about a third of the world's oil, have so far failed to agree a deal to cut output that would drop up prices. Algerian state energy company Sodatrack has signed a deal with Italian firm ENI for a solar power plant as the North African state looks to decrease domestic consumption of gas for power and export more. The 10 megawatts photovoltaic plant to be launched before the end of 2016 in Ogla in southern Algeria will supply the company's bare rubber field with electricity, allowing the gas to be used for other purposes. A major supplier of gas to Europe, Algeria has been in talks on how to improve the investment climate for foreign oil and gas operators who are skittish over the country's contract terms. It also has been discussing alternative energy and power projects to free up more gas for export. And in Europe, now Mario Draghi will visit Brussels and Berlin this week with the, his increasingly urgent message that governments must act to bolster the economy. Also data from IFO indicates German firms are expecting a golden autumn. Let's chew all of these with my colleague at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, Javier Aguedas. Good afternoon, Javier. Thank you very much for joining us on the program today. Now, the European Central Bank President will testify to the European Parliament today and address a closed-door session of German lawmakers on Wednesday with urgent message that governments must act to bolster the economy. What exactly does he want the government to do to help growth? Well, Jimmy, it is the same argument that we've heard over and over again, and it's the same battle that we've seen over and over again. The European Central Bank continues to ask governments to implement reforms, different types of reforms, like uh, making the labor market more flexible for companies, um, investments as well, especially here in Germany. That is one of the critical points. The European Central Bank wants the German government that is having uh, a surplus in its finances to invest more in critical infrastructure um, and in many different programs like research here. But that's one side of the story. The other side of the story is that governments in Europe know that if they do not implement these reforms, if they do nothing, well, the consequences are not going to be that bad precisely because the European Central Bank is helping them by investing billions of euros in the economy every month. So that is the old discussion, the pressure um, for the governments to implement reforms critical to the future of their economies is not as big if the European Central Bank keeps helping them. And that's why we see the both sides of the discussion. Right. Now let's look at the biggest economy in Europe. That's uh, German. Germany. Now, data from uh, that country, from I IFO, says that um, the business sentiment there brightened unexpectedly in September, meaning companies are clearly more optimistic about their business outlook. How impressive are investors in the market about this piece of information?
Well, it's a piece of good news in a day where we're not seeing that much movement uh, in the markets numbers. Uh, there are some problems in the banking sector today affecting the overall mood, but it is, of course, uh, quite relieving to see that investors um, see a number of the EFO index, which is perhaps the most important index uh, on business sentiment here in Germany, um, looking good. Now, it's important to remember that these figures come after the Brexit vote. The figures of the EFO index, uh, which is a survey, uh, to remind our viewers of that, um, that we saw in July and in August, uh, including the impact of the Brexit vote. So um, business people were quite worried about how the future would look like. Now we know that uh, the Brexit is still not uh, directly in front of our door, that it will take some time, that the United Kingdom has not formally initiated the process either. So all in all, um, people continue to doing business as usual. And that's why we are seeing some um, optimism among um, the different companies here in Germany. Now, if nothing goes wrong in the next couple of months, people assume that we will see quite a good autumn uh, here for the German uh, economy. But of course, we can never tell because we don't know what is going to happen ahead of us. Well, talking about that negative mood on the banking sector, I guess it has to do with the crisis Deutsche Bank is currently uh, going uh, through. Uh, that bank shares hit a record low just on report that um, German Chancellor Angela Merkel won't help the troubled lender. Now, this looks like a case of not big to fail. Where does the bank go from here? Well, it is a very difficult situation for Deutsche Bank. We have to be very clear on that. Let's not forget that uh, this used to be one of the most prestigious and it is still the biggest bank in Germany. So it has a very big systemic risk, meaning that if Deutsche Bank somehow fails, well, that will probably cause a lot of bad consequences for many other companies in the banking sector as well. Now, the bank does not only have the problems banks have right now, which is that due to the fact that the European Central Bank has historically low interest rates right now, the banks simply don't make make that much money. The key sources of income. The bank is in the midst of a restructuring process which is supposed to solve problems but it also costs a lot of money to do these restructurings and we have a lot of legal fines at Deutsche Bank that are also causing big trouble because they are losing money that is crucial as their capital shrinks. So all in all without the state aid which is supposed to um, categorically reject it right now, um, the bank is standing there alone and uh, People will just have to trust the hands of its CEO and its management to somehow make things work. Jimmy. Right, I just hope that this bank uh, comes out of this crisis very soon, as soon as possible. Thank you very much for your time, Javier. Javier Aguedas, DWTV Channels TV financial correspondent. Now moving on to Asia now. Markets there were lower today with sentiment this week likely to be dominated by the first U.S. presidential debate as well as an upcoming informal meeting of OPEC producers. In Australia, the ASX 200 finished flat at 5,431.40. In South Korea, the KOSPI closed down 6.96 points. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index was down 1.42 percent in afternoon trade. Chinese mainland markets closed lower with the Shanghai Composite down 1.74 percent while the Shenzhen Composite shared 41.51 points. Japan's Nikkei 225 lost 209.46 points after a speech from Bank of Japan governor that the central bank was prepared to use every policy tool available to achieve its 2 percent inflation target sent the yen higher. Moody's has downgraded Turkey's sovereign bond rating to junk. The ratings agency said the country's finances had weakened amid increased political turmoil after the July coup attempt that stopped necessary reforms. Moody's cut Turkey's key bond rating by one notch to junk level, citing mounting political and economic risks. It added that the government's reaction to the July coup attempt has set back expected reforms and the rule of law. The ratings agency emphasized it expected growth to slow over the coming years as constraints on the externally funded consumption fueled Turkish economy emerge. 
And when we return after the break, Fitch downgrades Angola's sovereign ratings. Details in a moment.